Hello and welcome back to the Book to Movie Club. My name is Serena and today I'm so, so, so excited to be talking to you about the expatriates slash the expats. I'm hoping that this will be a less chaotic <laughs> video than the last one, which I talked about um, one day and my thoughts on the movie and the book and the series. If you haven't seen that, make sure to go check it out. Um, but today we are talking about a book that I truly, truly loved and a show that disappointed me. <laughs> We're talking about the expatriates. Okay, so before we get into it, let's talk about the author. And just to be clear, the expatriates is the title of the book and the expats is the title of the show on Amazon Prime. So this book was written by Janice Y.K. Lee. She is a Hong Kong born and American raised, I believe, um, author. She has two best-selling books, The Expatriates, which we're discussing today, as well as The Piano Teacher, which was her debut novel, which was published in 2009. The Expatriates was published in 2016, so there was a little bit of a chunk of time in between her two books, but I believe both of them are still best-selling novels, and I loved reading The Expatriate, so I'm really excited to get into The Piano Teacher later in the year. I want to read you a little quote from an article by The New York Times about Janice Y.K. Lee's books. The two books taken together are a rich education in an almost century of cruelty, exploitation, deep pockets, and good parties in the city, a setting that becomes a complicated character in its own right. One thing I truly love is when the city that a book take place in, takes place in is a character of its own. This came up in the comments of my video about if Beale Street could talk, New York plays a pivotal role in that novel. And the same with the expatriates. Obviously they're expats, so the city that they're in is important. But the way that Hong Kong is written about in the book is really... I want to say beautiful because I can't think of another word, but it's just really well done. I've never been to Hong Kong, so I can't speak to the experience, but it was, I really enjoyed reading about the city and how the expats in this book kind of engaged with the city. And I think the show did a really good job of that as well, especially in the fifth episode. It really like, anyway, we'll get into that later. <laughs> So The Expatriates is about Mercy, Margaret, and Hillary, who are three Americans who have moved to Hong Kong for various reasons. Margaret is a mother of three who moved to Hong Kong to because her husband's job transferred her there. Hillary, for similar reasons, um, she is trying to become a mom. She's trying to get pregnant and move to Hong Kong because of her husband's job. And Mercy, Mercy, Mercy. Mercy. <laughs> Mercy is a young woman who, after graduating from college, was having a really hard time finding work and being able to live the life that she wanted to live in New York City, where she was from. So she moved to Hong Kong, hoping for an escape and maybe more opportunities. But choices were made. <laughs> I have been waiting to talk about this. These three women kind of move through the same circle in Hong Kong. In the book, they aren't friends. None of them are really close, but they interact with each other a lot because they're expats and there are events that happen for American expats and they all kind of just like know each other. They always say in the book and the show, Hong Kong is a small city. And so they all just kind of are aware of each other. Margaret is trying to find a new um, nanny for her children. So she hires Mercy kind of for um, a little vacation, a family vacation that they go on to South Korea. But Mercy is not a responsible person as we can see from the book. And she is distracted while taking care of the kids. And as a result, the youngest son of Margaret goes missing in South Korea which is really heartbreaking. <sighs> so throughout the book, we are reading about Margaret trying to navigate life after losing a child, after her child goes um, 
is taken or, or goes missing. Hillary, on the other hand, is trying to get pregnant throughout the book. When she starts her period while going on a tour of an orphanage in Hong Kong, she decides that she wants to adopt a child, basically. But there are a lot of hoops that you have to go through in order to do that in Hong Kong. I think they said like they don't really want expats adopting children and you also can't be very specific about <laughs> there's a lot of details you can't be too specific about the child that you want they want every child to have an opportunity to be adopted so you're not going to walk into um a foster home and be like i want that one you sign up to adopt and they assign you a child but hillary kind of skirts the system a little bit by offering piano lessons to one of the kids in the orphanage and this child is not of hong kong origin i don't know how to describe there's a lot of things with hong kong and china right now and so i am not the most educated on that but i'm gonna do my best his family is not from hong kong and he is not chinese i believe and for this reason it's harder for him to get adopted, but Hillary views that as an opportunity, an easier way to adopt this child because he is not necessarily what a lot of families in Hong Kong would want um, if they were to adopt. It's really interesting because she knows that she's not really, like the adoption agency or the foster home, the orphanage, whatever it is, wants him to have the opportunities that she is offering, but they know that this is not really how things are supposed to go down. And other people are aware of that as well. So Hillary is on this chat room pretending to not be herself and sees people talking about her, other expats talking about her taking advantage of this child and the lack of opportunities that he has to really like get close. Eventually she does end up adopting him and we'll talk more about that later but let's get to mercy mercy feels like she's bad luck she just thinks she doesn't have a lot, a lot of opportunities so when she arrives to hong kong she's doing a bunch of side jobs to try to make it work which i'm very confused by i don't remember what she studied in school but she has a degree that she's not using when she was in undergrad, she was friends with very wealthy kids or kids who came from very wealthy families. So when she left school and was back in New York City with these people that held all this money, she was like, why can't I make this work? Like, why isn't this working for me? But it was because she was living above her means. She didn't come from that, but she wanted to be a part of it and it wasn't working. So she was like, let me go to Hong Kong and see if it works there. I don't know. But Mercy ends up sleeping with Hillary's husband. They meet at a bar. She knows this is a married man and they start having an affair and, and she gets pregnant and it's a whole thing. By the end of the book, the ending is really interesting. Because with all the things that each of these characters are going through, this book is about motherhood and the connection between mothers. And so by the end, they are all surrounding Mercy. Margaret and Hillary really show up for her. Regardless of the hurt that she caused in their lives or was a part of, they show up for her because they want her to know that how important motherhood is and they're all able to experience the importance of motherhood. I'm not saying motherhood is as important as this book is telling us that it is, but I that's the takeaway that I got from this book. Um, Mercy's mom also shows up. They don't have a great relationship, but she shows up and there's really some, some growth within that relationship that we get to read about in the book. And so... That's really all that happens in this book. Even though Margaret's son going missing is big and there's a lot of emotions that come up around it. Other than that, there is not a lot of drama in this book, which I was really surprised by. There's a point in the book when Mercy is serving. She's like a, a cater waiter. I don't know what a, another word for that would be. But she's working at a party that Margaret is 
throwing for her husband's 50th birthday or something. And Hillary is there as well. I don't think at that point Hillary knew that Mercy was pregnant. And also Margaret didn't know that Mercy was going to be there. So when I got up to that point of the book, I was like, it's about to go down. This is how everyone is going to find out everything about Mercy and about Hillary's husband. And there's going to be some blow up at this party. And there was not. Mercy got out of there. She dipped. Margaret saw her and was emotional about it. Hillary saw her but didn't know who she was and didn't care. And so there was really no drama in this book. But I still really enjoyed it. This was a book that kept me wanting to read more. Like I I was attached. I was invested. And I wasn't disappointed at the end of it. There was one part, which I'll get into, um, that was a little disappointing. But other than that, I really enjoyed this book and it made me maybe because I knew that um Nicole Kidman was playing Margaret in the show but I kept thinking I was like is if this is what Big Little Lies the book feels like then I need to read more of this I think it made me understand that I really like contemporary fiction contemporary fiction is my favorite genre or literary fiction I don't even know what you would call it let me know in the comments but this style where like people are just living their lives is my favorite type of book I think and so I really enjoyed it the one bone I did have to pick like I was ready to give this book a five stars even though it, nothing really happens <laughs> barely anything happens I was like this is okay I shouldn't say that things do happen because it's people's lives but it's not dramatic it's not played up for the book and so I was going to give this book five stars but I think I docked it a 0.5 for a very small reason. Mercy is pregnant, as I mentioned, but she's not in a relationship with this man. I think his name is David. And she starts dating someone else, knows she's pregnant while she's dating him, knows she has to tell him eventually. And we are like going through it with her, her going on these dates and him mentioning her gaining weight but he was like it's beautiful we're we're dating we like each other we're enjoying each other's time like I love that she's put on weight and then ev eventually she has to tell him that she's pregnant but we don't get to read about that conversation it just tells us that she told him and that it was dr like a dramatic situation but we didn't get to witness the drama and I wanted the drama <laughs> I wanted more drama from this book and so I give it a 4.5, but it's still really good. I still think about the book a lot. And because I enjoyed the book so much, I was really excited to watch the show. But the show was a bit of a disappointment. So let's get into it. So the series, The Expats on Amazon Prime was directed by Lulu Wang. She, um, if you're not familiar, also wrote and directed The Farewell, the film, which was beautiful. If you have not seen this movie yet, you need to watch it. It's such a good movie. So Lulu Wang also wrote a couple of the episodes for the series and the author of the book wrote the last episode, which in my last video, I was talking about how rare it is to hear about the writer writing for the adaptation because David Nichols wrote the screenplay for the movie one day anyway go watch that video <laughs> and so to see another author be able to write for the adaptation I think is really cool and maybe is not as rare as I think it is but anyway glad to see it in an interview for the New York Times Janice YK Lee spoke about her experience writing for the show and this is what she said I told Lulu the director that her beautiful show and my novel are like cousins, definitely related, but wholly different beings. And I think that is really important for me to internalize. Somebody commented on my poor things video. <laughs> I want to take that video down. People are really mean. <laughs> um, someone commented and they were like, I understand the point of your channel, but why? Why do this comparison between book to movie adaptations, whatever? And I didn't reply because I don't want to be rude. But what I want to say is because I want to. <laughs> I understand why some people think you shouldn't compare the book to the adaptation because they're not the same. And sometimes they're not supposed to be the same. But I enjoy when I find out that something was a book and it's being turned into a movie or a show. I love reading the book first so I can compare it. 
and I'm going to continue doing it. And Janice YK Lee did that for me and let me know that these things are cousins and not twins, okay? <laughs> and I love that. I think that's important. I think it's clear when you start watching it, like there are changes made. Nicole Kidman is a producer and is starring in the show, of course. And it's interesting because the character in the book is half Korean. I can't remember. She like passes for white, but some women, some of the other Asian characters in the book will look at her and be like, are you Asian? And she's like, yeah. And so obviously Nicole Kidman isn't. And this is important because the child that goes missing is described in the book as looking more Asian than the other children because of Margaret's family. They make up for that in the show by making the husband Asian. So it still makes sense. But Nicole Kidman is an interesting choice anyway. <laughs> She's a great actress, so I'm not trying to take anything away from her. I just think it was an interesting choice. But I do love the man that played her husband. I'm gonna put a picture here because I can't remember his name right now. But yeah, the rest of the cast, let me get into the rest of the cast before I go any further, I'm all over the place. So we have Nicole Kidman as Margaret. Sarayu Blue plays Hillary. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing her name. And Ji Young Yo is playing, what's her name? Mercy. <laughs> Another change, there are multiple changes made. Again, this is a cousin, not a twin. Hillary is not a good person. <laughs> In the book, Hillary is, is hurting. Hillary wants to be a mother but can't get pregnant, is being cheated on by her husband, is left by her husband, and really brings it together and creates the life that she wants for herself. In the show, Hillary is lying about trying to get pregnant to her husband. She's still taking birth control behind his back. And he, it's kind of used as the reason for him leaving. Her behavior is the reason that he leaves. And it makes sense because she is pretty self-centered, I would say, in the show, and he can't handle it. She talks about not wanting children as a result of her upbringing. She doesn't have a great relationship with either of her parents. Her dad had an affair and I think had two children with um, another woman. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's not great. I think, as much as I dislike the changes made to Hillary's character, I actually do like where her storyline goes in the show when it comes to her facing the issues in her family back home in America. I have mixed feelings, still processing. <laughs> Mercy is changed a little bit as well. In the show, she's queer. She was, you know, got pregnant by David and was also dating a woman on the show. And I appreciate the change made to the character that she was dating. In the book, it's a man who's looking for a wife, not some man, it's this guy she knew from college. I think they went to the same university and he is from Hong Kong and he wants to find a wife and like wants to bring her around all his friends and it's chill until she, he finds out that she's pregnant by another man. And in the show, the relationship ends for a similar reason. She finally tells her that she's pregnant and she's like, what the hell is going on? But the woman that she's dating also checks her. She's like, Mercy is convinced that she's the most unlucky person in the world and everything is happening to her because she's unlucky. And this girl is like, girl, you have so much privilege yeah, you're pregnant, but you're pregnant by a rich American. Like, worse things have happened. <laughs> worse things could happen. You need to get it together. And that's exactly what she needed to hear. So good. <laughs> the final change that I want to talk about is this major theme of motherhood not being as important in the show as it seemed to be in the book. I think this was like maybe I misinterpreted but I think this was like the most important theme from the book and it just was not as important in the show maybe it didn't need to be I would have loved to have seen Hillary become a mother but she didn't want to be so I just need to let that go these are cousins and not twins 
I need to get over it. There was something about this show though that just was not that entertaining. It's only six episodes, but I found myself picking up my phone through all of them except for episode five, which we'll talk a little bit more about. But I think all of these characters on the sh- in the series are a little hard to like. And so I wasn't really into it. And it just felt a little boring. And I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't like it, but I didn't like it. Episode five goes off on its own a little bit and gives more of the experience of the other kind of side characters of this show. So it talks a little bit more about the woman that um, Mercy is dating and what her and her friends are experiencing as protests are happening in Hong Kong. And it also talks a little more about Hillary's housekeeper and Margaret's nanny. I could not think of the words for the <laughs> the roles they the, the jobs that they play. It's really interesting to see how those characters have to navigate through the world and what their lives look like, especially for Margaret and Hillary's housekeeper and nanny. They're in very hard positions. There's this interaction between Hillary and her housekeeper that really talks about the the power dynamic in that type of situation and how unfortunate it is. Like you think you're bonding with somebody, but you guys aren't friends and it's just awkward. And she wants to convince you that you guys are friends because she's drunk and the next morning she's going to wake up and act like none of this ever happened. And so that's basically what happens in the episode. For Margaret's nanny she has to make a really hard decision she has a family of her own in the philippines she has young grandchildren her kids are like you do not need to work this hard just come back to the philippines and we'll take care of you but she's so attached to the children that she is helping raise margaret's children um especially after gus goes missing that she she can't leave them she wants to go back to her family but she can't and that is real that part was pretty sad so yeah I think that episode was my favorite episode of the series but other than that I wasn't really feeling it I don't think I would recommend the show to anyone but I would recommend the book to everyone so even though Janice YK Lee says that this show and book are cousins when it comes to which is better it is definitely the book so go read it tell me your thoughts. If you've watched the show, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you loved it more than I did, let me know, but be nice about it. And if you hated it, let me know. (laughs) Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm not sure which video is coming next, but there will be one on Monday. So, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it and I'll see you then.